Welcome to another Big Jimny video. Those of you who follow me on Facebook and Instagram would have noticed that just before Christmas, uh, my son gave me a present by bringing Big Jimny back home after a drive out and saying that the engine warning light is on. And I thought, oh, great, uh, just what I needed for Christmas. And then I thought, no, what I can do is I can do a video on uh, discovering what the uh, error code is, how to find the error code, and then fixing it. Of course, typically what's happened today is, uh, which is Boxing Day, just after Christmas, being bored, I've come out and started up the car uh, to start tracing the fault and it's cleared. Engine management uh, lights uh, have a sequence. They only come on after so many hits of a certain type of fault. They also go off again after a certain number of hits. I think on this one, it's two or three a successful start so in bringing it in and out the garage we've had two or three successful starts and the fault code disappears again so there is no fault on it at the moment however I can show you how to look up what the fault was uh, and if it occurs again in the future then we will uh, see about fixing it what I have here is a little cheap Bluetooth uh, diagnosis module um, this one was actually free with some car insurance I had a couple of years ago. Uh, they're available for uh, sort of like $9.99 on eBay as well. Um, this one is seems to be quite flexible. It does uh, both this car, which has got the OBD2 style socket and a K-line diagnosis channel on it. And it does... Um, the car behind the camera which is little Jimny a gen 4 um, which again has the obd2 socket like this but has a can bus diagnosis system i'll have a quick look at both just to show you them both working uh, in this video so first of all we plug this one in on the uk car it is by the driver's left knee up under the dashboard here so I just simply plug that in under the dashboard on the driver's knee side and on um, cars in Europe and other places around the world, the whole thing switches sides uh, like a mirror image. Uh, so that's it plugged in. I'll now connect up my uh, phone to the Bluetooth. In terms of software, I use this uh, SZ viewer, uh, which I think is Suzuki viewer. It's got all of the various uh, code interpretations specifically for a Suzuki programmed into it. And the first thing to do is to connect it uh, to the Bluetooth device, uh, which you'll see it's uh, connecting now and reading the device and uh, bringing up the initial display. Um, I'll do a close-up of this. Uh, as you can see now in the close-up, you can see that it's saying that it is a K-line uh, K-line uh, diagnosis channel and you can see that there is a DTC a code stored in the computer so in other words it stored the code even though it's now, now no longer showing it on the display and the code shown here is P0340 uh, which is camshaft position sensor circuit problem. And if you bring up for some more detail, it says that the uh, camshaft sensor pulse is out of specification, no signal during engine running. That's very interesting because just recently we've had trouble with Big Jimny starting when it's cold. Uh, <laughs> starting when it's hot okay it will turn over and turn over without actually starting when the engine's hot and there's quite a strong smell of fuel associated with this that would probably tie in with the camshaft position sensor because the camshaft position sensors on these are notorious for failing uh, due to heat uh, typically you get them cutting out when you're going up hills and things like this when the engine's hot and they just cut out and the car rolls to a halt then when it cools down off it goes again although those often don't throw up an engine management warning light they just keep on running okay so here we appear to have a 
symptom where the car doesn't start well when it's hot, strong smell of fuel, that's because it's not firing but fuel is still coming through the system and we have stored a crank uh, position sensor failure in the history. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I've got a, a new sensor on order uh, from the big Jimny store and I will also uh, keep an eye on this for the future. What else can we see while we've got it on? As I say, this is a 2003 Jimny and uh, earlier Jimny's from about 2001 earlier, you can't even read the diagnostics on it. So don't think that you can buy, unfortunately, one of these little ELM plug-in uh, units and read your car if it's older than that because uh, they didn't meet the standards. Uh, they had a Suzuki proprietary feed on a different connector within the, the uh, plug. And although there are some very expensive commercial readers that will read them, like £2,000 kind of units, um, and there was for a while um, a homemade uh, unit available, uh, they are now not uh, widely available, in the, certainly in the UK. Uh, so even though it appears that you can plug in a standard reader, you'll find you can't read anything. It's only on the later ones that this comes into action. Now, across the top of here, we have a number of uh, modules that it can read. Okay, 2003, fairly basic car. Uh, so the only ones that it will read on here, uh, the only intelligent units it's got is uh, the uh, airbag system. So this particular reader will read, there we go, that's reading the status of the airbag systems now. That's the only other thing. You've got all things like the air conditioning. <laughs> this one hasn't got air conditioning. Uh, the body control module. Um, this one doesn't have a body control module, I don't think, if I remember correctly. And anyway, it can't read it. Equally, the four-wheel drive system. Um, you can do the four-wheel drive system and some of these by looking at the flashing lights and they, they give you the codes on there, but they're not via the diagnostic system. Um, I don't have ABS uh, and therefore it can't find the ABS system. So that's about it. We really are left with just standard engine diagnostics uh, and DTC. Of course, I could actually clear the code here uh, if, um, if it was causing the engine light to stay on. But as I said, the engine light should clear anyway once you fix the fault for real. So I haven't got a fault. I've got a camshaft sensor issue which I need to look at uh, uh, when it occurs. Um, so all is well. Let's just have a quick look at what you can see on a Gen 4 via the diagnostics. So quick swap over vehicles. I'm now sitting in the passenger side of uh, Little Jimny, a Gen 4, UK specification Gen 4. Uh, the module's plugged in. On these it plugs in uh, again on the driver's side. This is the UK one on the driver's side by the driver's right hand knee plugs in just up underneath the dashboard and as you can see we are now connected uh, this time via the CAN bus as it says at the top of the screen uh, and uh, fortunately no DTC stored on this one so it's not detected any uh, issues at all but this time you can see that we have, uh, first of all, this is not an automatic, so it's got no automatic transmission, but we can now uh, interrogate the ABS system and measure the speeds uh, that the uh, each wheel thinks it's doing and acceleration um, and all the different voltages on the ABS system. We can uh, inter uh, interrogate the uh, four-wheel drive system a fairly simple four-wheel drive system on these uh, so there's not really a lot for it to say there but there's no error code stored there this one does have a body control module so here we can now see all of the different switch settings in the car things like the passenger door switch is, is closed the auto lights are off okay so it's got all of the different levels of uh, integration in the car 
available on here and we can see all the statuses so if you have a switch failure or some other thing uh, you know the door alarm doesn't seem to work because of a switch you can see here what it thinks the status of all the switches are uh, and this one's got some error codes in the in the body control module it's saying here that the sun load sensor is high and the temperature control actuator uh, circuit malfunction okay that's interesting because I've seen a number of people reporting uh, sun load sensor problems on these which results in the headlights and that uh, dipping and that not quite correctly um, and also uh, can result in the air conditioning and the battery uh, being affected so I'll actually have to store these and go away and have a look at them because it's got error codes on it uh, a new feature on this is I can interrogate the TPMS system uh, and again it tells me all about the different TPS centers what the uh, current tire pressures and all that is um, and gives me a history of the error code so you can he see here that it's reporting that the tires have been low pressure and all of that that's because it's reporting that it, they have needed to be pumped up which they have uh, what is of interest to quite a few people is the fact that you cannot adjust the tire pressure warning levels which would have been good if you could but I'm afraid you can't and then we have the air conditioning which this one has got air conditioning but it is saying uh, it can't see it now whether that's because uh, it doesn't uh, let me just play with the air conditioning a minute turn it on see if it sees it now no so this diagnostic system can't actually interrogate the air conditioning on this on this particular car pad steering yep yeah, we can see the pad steering what it thinks the pad steering status is and again the airbags so main thing of interest there is that actually it thinks there is a sensor problem on the sun sensor apart from that everything's fine so a little bluetooth module that i got free with insurance a little bit of code uh, on the phone and uh, we can read Gen 4s as well. As a quick postscript to the video, um, I had it pointed out that the code is actually well known, that fault code on our Gen 4 is a well known uh, fault code um, in which uh, the sun sensor says that it's uh, got a high load on it um, it turns out that it's because of LED lighting in my garage. Um, LED or fluorescent lighting in a garage gives the sensor error uh, because it expects sunlight or incandescent light, so a standard bulb. <laughs> Otherwise it throws an error code. So uh, it was uh, very simple, very straightforward, and I really should have realized it. So that's what that error code was.